Good morning. And welcome to Salem Lutheran Church, those who are with us live and those who are worshiping with us on live stream. Uh, it's nice to have you with us this morning. And we also would like to welcome Tim Mann as our guest organist who will be with us this Sunday and the next two Sundays. I know Tim well. Uh, he was a member at, Zy uh, at Zion when I was there and played the organ many, many times while he was at Zion. So uh, if you want to know anything about me, ask Tim. The only thing I ask though, is that I be given an opportunity for rebuttal. So, now, Tim's been a good friend for a long time, and it's good to see him. It gave me a chance uh, to catch up with him about his kids and what he's doing, and uh, learned a lot of new things. So, Tim, welcome to Salem. It's good to have you with us. Looking forward to the next couple of weeks. Anyways, uh, I don't believe I have any announcements. Are there anything we need to... Yes. If I would repeat that, I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> Anyways, you heard what Tim said. Just do that. Anyways, uh, nothing else? Let yes, Kirk. All right, Tim. Tim does the prayers. Tim, make note of that. Uh, the uh, family and friends of, what was her name? Ken. Oh, his, he died. Ken Smith. All right, family and friends of Ken Smith. Yes, we certainly will. Keep him in our prayers. Well, with that, let us rise, for this is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We continue our service with the gathering hymn, Lord of Light. If you want the music, it's 688 in the red hymnal.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save comfort and defend us gracious lord Amen. this is the feast of victory for our god Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We hear God's word. The first lesson comes from Ecclesiastics, chapter 1, verse 2, 12, 14, and chapter 2, 18 to 23. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, went king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. 
it is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun and see all his, all his vanity a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish, yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation even at night after their minds do not rest. This is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the second lesson is in Colossians 3, verses 1 through 11. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all in all. The word of the Lord. This Sunday is a reading from the Gospel of St. Luke in the 12th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Please be seated. Before I read this, I just want to explain a few things to you. Uh, this Gospel lesson is about Jesus is out one day, and, and a young man comes to him with a question. Well, actually not a question, but a favor. He wants Jesus to do something for him. You see, back in those days, uh, they didn't have a fair system for inheritance. Uh, if you were the oldest male child, you were in great shape because you got everything. And if you were a female, you got nothing. But before you get too angry about that, if you were the second oldest male, you also got nothing. Everything, whole kit and caboodle, went to the oldest male child. Well, apparently, Someone had died, a father had died, and uh, all the th possessions, the farmland and all the equipment, all the tractors and all the plows and everything was going to this one brother. He was the oldest male child. Well, the younger brother didn't like it, and he knew he had no legal recourse because he went to a, the judge and they would have said, well, you know the law. And so he goes to Jesus, 
hoping that Jesus maybe will go to his brother and say, hey, give him what's fair. So here's the story then. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, friend, who sent me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have filled with your presence and power. We ask now that you open our hearts and minds to your word that we may hear and learn. As in his name we pray, amen. You know, there's a story I, I came across uh, the other day, and I, I thought I would share it with you. I'm going to read. An interesting system has been used for capturing monkeys in the jungles of Africa. The goal, of course, is to take monkeys alive and unharmed for shipment to zoos in America. In an extremely human way, the captors use heavy bottles for this purpose. Heavy bottles with long, narrow necks into which they deposit a handful of sweet-smelling nuts. Now the bottles then, these heavy bottles, are dropped on the jungle floor. And the captors return the next money to find a monkey trapped next to each bottle. How is this accomplished? Well, the monkeys are attracted by the aromatic scent of the nuts. And they come to investigate the bottle, the nuts. And they see them in the bottle. And they reach in through this long neck into the bottle and they grab the nuts. And then they are trapped. The monkey can't take his hand out of the bottle as long as it's holding on to the nuts. But it is unwilling to open its hand and let them go. And so the bottle is also too heavy for them to carry it away. And so the monkey lays there with a handful of nuts in a glass bottle until the next morning. If only the monkey had enough common sense to let go of the nuts, he would have discovered freedom. But alas, he loved the nuts too much. You know, as I read that story over, it, it reminded me of the story that Jesus is telling us this morning in the Gospel lesson of Luke. He's reminding us what we need to do is what the monkey couldn't do. We need to let go of the nuts if we truly want to be free in this world. Of course, Jesus is not talking about nuts to us. He's talking about the things of this world that we fall so much into love with. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in the things of this life. Sometimes we think that life is all about the accumulation of stuff. And sometimes we think that if only we have these things, this stuff, that we will be happy. It's like the old saying, the one who dies with the most toys wins. And the toys we're talking about are the things we see in this life. And so we devote so much time and so much energy and so much of our life into accumulating those things. But you know, we shouldn't be so surprised by that. I mean, isn't that what we hear every day? Hear that every day. Just look at the commercials on TV. The successful person is the one who owns the big home. I, the one I love best, by the way, is the one at Christmas time, where they're showing this, the Lexus, 
and there's a big bow on top of it, and the husband is giving his wife a brand new Lexus for Christmas. <gasps> what a, how much he loves her, isn't that sweet? I don't know about you, but I've never given my spouse a, a Lexus. I didn't think I could afford to give my spouse a Lexus. But yet, that's what is success, and that's what happiness is. Getting a Lexus, getting a Mercedes, or a Lamborghini, or whatever. The successful person, why, he's the one who also has a second home, a summer home. The successful person is the one who can go on cruises or on expensive vacations overseas. And if only we have those things, then we will be happy, and our marriages will be happy, and we'll be in love for the rest of our life. Be success and happiness is defined by how many things we have accumulated. You know, I, I remember when my wife and I were first married, and uh, we couldn't afford to do much. In fact, a, a big night for us was after I got home from work at the church, uh, we'd go for a walk. That was a big thing. We couldn't afford much, but I tell you, as life went on and we started accumulating things and I started getting jobs that paid me better and money wasn't a worry or a concern, I look back on those first days of marriage as the best. Then we were struggling together, when we were working together. It's not in the accumulation of things. It's in how we relate to one another. Or if you don't believe it, what about the TV shows you see? TV shows will show you how to be successful in business. How many shows don't we have on TV that show you how to invest your money, how to do this, how to do that, and if you do this, or how to start your own business, and if you do that, if you get that, you'll be rich, and you'll be well, and you'll be happy. Susan Orman. Mad Money with Jim Cramer. Message loud is clear, isn't it? Greed is good. Because life is about things. This is a little aside, by the way. Uh, do you know what the number one cause of divorce in our country is? Money. And not what you're thinking, by the way. I bet you if I would poll you all one by one, you would say, it's the lack of money. If family doesn't have enough money to pay the bills, put food on the table, or pay the rent, that's what causes a strain on a family. That's what leads to divorce, right? Wrong. It's having too much money that is the problem. When we have too little, as I said when my wife and I were first married, people pull together. They work together. That's what brings families together. Working together, trying to make ends meet. That's what brings family. That's what forges a union that lasts time and trials. So Jesus is saying to us, look it. What we need to do is to focus our life on what's important in life. And what are those important things? Well, number one, our relationship with God. You know, that's why we come here on a Sunday morning, and that's why we worship. Our relationship with God is the most important thing. Why we worship as a family, that's why it's important. And besides, I've always asked myself, what are people doing on Sunday morning that is so important that it takes precedence over worshiping as a family of God? And yet... Many men make the decision on an average not to come. On an average Sunday, we're being told now that in our country, fewer than 10% of the Americans are in a church. And I know I, when I used to be at Zion, I used to have to go between services. At the time, we only had two services, an 8 and a, I think it was 10.30, Tim? I think it was 10.30. And I used to, in between services, run home to pick my wife up and bring her home. And I used to have to come up uh, Gashi Street, and that's where the College of Worcester Golf Course is. And I was always amazed at how many people I'd see on the golf course and not in church. And I took great relish in rolling my windows down and hollering out, Even! As I drove down through the golf course. And yet, if you, if you would go this morning, if we'd all leave right now, I wonder how busy Walmart would be. I wonder how busy Kohl's is. I wonder how many people are in line at Starbucks. I mean, that's what's important in life, isn't it? Why go to church when you've got so many other more important things to do? And yet, that's what really is important to us, an active life of worship, coming here to recognize what is important in life. And number one, our relationship with God. Number two, an active prayer life, 
where individually or as families we gather together to pray, praying for ourselves, praying for our families, praying for our friends, praying for life and love and for all in this great country of ours. And yet so often prayer is not something we do. Because after all, only pastors can pray. Because we know the secret formula, the area code to get a hold of God. I can tell you story after story where I saw that during my ministry. One of my favorites was when I was still a young intern. Call us vicars back in those days at this large church in uh, Northwest County, St. Louis, a place called, uh, well, I'll get it now, I can't remember, Emmanuel Olivet. It was in Olivet, Missouri. And they had a big anniversary celebration one time with a big dinner afterwards. We had a guest speaker and all that. And after the church, the guest speaker, the pastor, and I were taking our vestments off and getting ready to go down and join the people for the lunch. And uh, suddenly we heard a knock on the door, and we opened the door, and here were three of the organizers of that event standing at our door. And we looked at them and said, yeah, what's up? They said, well, we're waiting for you to come on down and say the prayer. And the pastor looked at them and said, can't any of you say a prayer before a meal? And they kind of looked at each other like, no. Hey, prayer is just a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God. Just to talk to God. Just open your heart. You know, my, my prayer time when I used to work at Zion, I'd come home and I needed to kind of get stressed out. I would go for walks or ru runs. Yeah, I used to run at one time. And uh, that was my prayer time, running through the trees at night. Or the other thing I would do, and people used to make fun of me for this, but when I'd get home, I have a street light right in my front yard on, my, on the street I live. And so at 10 o'clock at night, I'd take my golf club and little plastic golf balls out, and I'd be hitting them off the front lawn. And that's how people identified our, our house, because they'd meet my wife, and they'd say, oh, I know your husband. Isn't he the crazy guy who's golfing at 10 o'clock at night? Yeah. But that's when I would pray. That's when I would pray. Prayer is just talking to God. Reading the Bible. That's where we find God's Word speaking to us, to each and every one of us, and telling us what's important in life. What's going on in your life? Do you have questions about what's going on in your life or others? I really and truly believe you can find the answers to that in the Bible. Just open it. Listen to God speaking to you. Just read. What's also important? Our relationship with God that lasts forever. You know, long after the things of life have disappeared and fallen into dust, long after this life has come to its end, as it will for all of us. You know, I think all of us think that life will always be forever. You know, it's hard for me to believe that I'm 77 years old now. It seems like it was just yesterday I was 21. And having fun, and dating, going out with girls, parties. And now here I am, 77. Life moves on. And I realize how old I am when I realized the other day my, I have two children. My son is 51. That's an old man. What's, what am I having an old man for a son for? My daughter, youngest, my baby, my little girl is 45. You know, life goes on. Love, life doesn't last forever. What lasts forever is our relationship with God. And long after this world has fallen into distant memory, and long after the sun has exploded, it is our relationship with God that will still be there. Join me in a prayer, won't you? Lord, help me to remember what is really and truly important. Number one, you. Number two, my family. And number three, everything else. Amen. We continue our worship now with our next song, which is from the Red Hymnal, 589, if you want the music. All depends on our possessing.
together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. vision in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. O God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food, nourish the land and all its inhabitants. O God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, activists, and for the healing of nations. Hear us, O God. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress, especially Jane, Emily, Lorna, Joyce, the family of Ken, Beverly, Amanda, Barbara, Monica, Lynn, Sue, Triton and his family, Bill, Marion, Jean, Tony, the family of Sharon, family of Zachary, family of Andy, Robert, George, and those whom we now name aloud 
or in our hearts. Renew us at your table of mercy. O oh God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. O oh God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints. Inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Hear us, O oh God. prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment and share that peace with one another. Peace. for joining us this Sunday for our Sunday live stream service. This is the time that we will be passing the offering plate. I encourage you to make a contribution to Salem Lutheran Church either by check or by using our PayPal button that is found on our slcw.org website. Thank you in advance and I now return you to our service.
God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. <laughs> merciful, O God, our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise. Call us to your table. Grant us your life. For when the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation. David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for your healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city, and with infinite love, he granted the people your life. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and every place, we plead, Amen. O oh God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic. O oh God, most motherly. O oh God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, the life in you now and forever. Amen. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat, this is the body of Christ. Take and drink the blood of Christ. Let us rise in prayer. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. We conclude our service with, my hope is built on nothing less. If you want the music, it's 597 in the red hymnal.
let you go. I just want to say how much fun this was having you here with us. And Tim, it was good to have you. It's like sort of like Zion 2.0. So uh, it was it made me feel at home again. After 11 years, I've been retired now. So thank you for being with us, Tim. And Tim's going to be with us for two more Sundays. So we'll look forward to that. Until we see you next week, now go in peace. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor.